Hey guys, Ravage here. This is the follow-up video to my quick update video where I covered some frequently asked questions and rough transmog coverage. In this one I will be covering what instances you need and what boss to kill for my transmog set, which is the Bloodfang Recolored set. At the end of the video I will show a quick guide on how to solo Malagos 10 Man for my transmog swords, which are called Hailstorms. This video will be sped up just to save time, but if you feel I may have missed something, comment below and I'll be sure to answer as soon as possible. But enough talk, let's just jump right in. Alright guys, the first dungeon I'm going to be talking about is Mana Tombs. You're going to need to kill the last boss in Mana Tombs, and for all these clips, I pretty much just run around using Spinning Crane Kick when there's multiple mobs, and then go up and touch a death the boss I need to. This is located out in Terracar Forest, right outside of Shatrath, just south of it. There's a bunch of instances right there. I suggest you do this one, and then head straight to Anshadine Crypts, which I will show a video for that right after this one. Alright, as I stated, I was going to go ahead and show the Anchodine Crypts one right after this. I suggest you do the Mana Tombs and then this one because they're both right next to each other and you can knock out the two really quickly. This one, once again, you're going to have to kill the last boss. He drops the boots and these were the, like I stated before, the bane of my existence. They were extremely, just a nuisance. They did not want to drop for me. Finally, I got him to drop and hopefully you guys will have better luck than I did. Alright, in this next clip I'm going to be showing how to do the steam vaults run. I'm going to show this one at normal speed because it's actually pretty quick. You're going to just cut right through a couple of mobs and go right up and kill this boss right away. This one in Black Moraz, which is the last dungeon I show, you're able to do on normal. You can reset them over and over and over and keep killing these bosses until you finally get your loot to drop. Also, I am showing this one, then Underbog, then Slave Pens, in this order for a significant reason. The reason I say this is because Slave pens, you cannot go to the entrance to get out of it. You actually have to hearth out of it. So I do them in this order so you knock out all three because they're all right next to each other. And then you can hearth out once you're done with slave pens. So, good luck on the loot. Alright, the next one on the list is the Underbog. This one, unfortunately, you do have to do on heroic difficulty, meaning you can only do it once a day. And the boss you have to kill is kind of near the end of the instance. This is a little bit of a bigger instance, so it will take you a little bit to get over to him, but do what I did. Just put on some music, and keep using Roll and Tiger's Lust on cooldown, and you'll actually get there pretty quickly. After you kill this guy, you can actually hop down and get out of the instance and head straight over to Slave Pens. Alright, and the last one out of these three in Zangramarsh is Slave Pens. 
Slave Pen's reason is last is because, once again, you cannot run out of the instance. You have to actually hearth out once you're complete, so you might want to do this one last out of these three. This one has to be done on heroic difficulty, and this boss is actually pretty simple. Just run up and use Touch of Death and you'll kill him instantly. Alright, the next dungeon on the list is the Architraz. You have to do this one on a Heroic, and this dungeon is actually out in Netherstorm near the Cosmo Wrench. It's one of the floating instances right near Tempest Keep. You're going to want to just fly in there and go ahead and get to pretty much near the last boss. Once again, you should have no trouble getting there. Just keep using Roll and Tiger's Lust. Try and use them every single time they're off cooldown because you will noticeably get there faster. Alright, the next dungeon on the list is the Blood Furnace, and this one has to be done on Heroic Difficulty, and this dungeon is located out in Hellfire Peninsula. Once you get into this dungeon, you do have to kill the last boss, unfortunately, but it can go by kind of quick. If you're an engineer, make sure you use your Nitro Boost, and anything that's downhill, use your Goblin Glider. It does make you go faster, so it can save you some time. After I do kill the last boss, I go ahead and show you how to get out of this dungeon, because I've noticed how some people don't really know how to. It's a cool little path, and... I think it's kind of a unique mechanic put in the game. And for the last dungeon you need to do, this is the Black Moraz. This one is located in the Caverns of Time out in Gadgets Day, I want to say, or Tanaris. I'm sorry, Tanaris. This one is the longest one out of them all, not because it's lengthy as in there's a lot to do, but you have a waiting period. This instance has a bunch of portals that come up, and you have to keep killing mobs as they come out of there before anything. That's not the problem. The problem is, every six portals you kill a boss. So there's 18 portals and three bosses. Every time you kill a boss, they give you like a, it seems almost like a five minute intermission to rebuff, res people if you needed to, and it's kind of annoying because you can't speed it up. So just go refill your water, or play some guitar, or do something to burn the time because it can be a little bit lengthy. This one and Steam Vaults that stayed before you can do on normal and repeat it multiple times till you get your loot. Unfortunately this one took me about three hours of grinding for me to finally get the helm to drop from here. So hopefully you guys have better luck than I do.
right now for Malagos 10 man. This is the raid boss you need to kill if you want to get the Hailstorm, which is the weapons I use for my transmog set. Now, for this, it has a three phase fight. It's got a ground phase, air phase, and then the Drake phase. The first phase isn't that bad. You just go ahead and DPS the boss, and he'll eventually put you into a vortex where you're spinning around him. At that point, you need to be looking around the screen like I was to find the sparks. These sparks will spawn, and they actually, when you kill them, drop a AoE on the ground that gives you 50% damage increase. However, if the boss was to eat him, he would gain the damage increase, though, so he would be doing a lot more damage to you. So you want to kill those as soon as possible. Use Spinning Fire Blossom to shoot them from a range, and they go down in about one hit, no problem. So once again, stand in those, kill the boss, and then activate phase 2 at around 50%. You don't have to do anything other than just DPS him to that point. Alright, now for the air phase, this one is actually pretty fun and easy. There's going to be blood elves that are flying around on these little saucers that will be damaging you from above. You need to kill the one that comes closest to you really fast, it should take a couple hits no problem. As soon as you kill them, the disc will fall on the ground and you need to click it actually to like mount up onto the disc. And at that point it becomes almost like a flying mount and you fly around on it, but you're also attacking people. So I'm going to go around and kill all the blood elves on the flying disc part. Once that happens, you fall to the ground and you start phase 3, the drake phase. Waiting, to change why you're fading. It's a kinetic start if you push through. Just don't think too hard. Make a move soon It's like you're underwater Deep at sea There's no boat, no... Alright guys, at this point you will have activated phase 3, or the Drake phase. When this happens, Malagos, as you saw, will break the ground out from out underneath you, and you're going to fall onto your Drake. Your Drake will have a couple buttons on his toolbar, and you're only going to use three of them this whole fight. Right off the bat, I go ahead and stack up the third button three times, which is your hot. And then, at this point for the whole fight, you're literally going to use the same rotation of one, one, two, three. What I mean by that is, you're going to hit the first button twice, then the second button once, and then the third button once. Over and over and over. What this does is keeps your hot up and your dot rolling. As the dot is rolling, it will get stronger and stronger, so as the fight goes on, he'll die faster and faster. This fight's pretty simple. Just avoid, I believe, where Malagos fixes his eye on you, which you can literally just fly to the side and avoid it and keep doing one, one, two, three. So, do this, and you guys will kill Malagos and hopefully get the loot you're looking for. So, good luck on the loot, guys. And congrats guys, you have soloed Malagos 10 man. At this point, you can just watch the rest of the video, I will show you where to fly over and get the loot, and then where to fly to actually get out of the instance. So, once again, congrats.
wrap up this video. Hopefully after this vid, if you were hoping to get the Blood Fang recolored set, you now have a good idea of how to get started. I will be posting some BG and Arena footage later in the week, so be sure to check back for that. As always, if you enjoyed what you saw, please toss me a like, fave, and subscribe. I'd greatly appreciate it. I really enjoy the community's feedback, and you guys keep giving me some great ideas for some vids. If you would like to see something in a vid, be sure to post a comment or PM me in game or on YouTube, and I'll see what I can do. And once again, guys, this is Ravage saying thanks for watching, and I hope to see you in the BGs. Make a move soon It's like you're